A lazy Susan is both circle-ish and lazy, right? Well, my wife asked for one, and I just figured it was so that she could have something to remind her of me, since I'm also circle -ish and lazy. So I'm setting out to make a pretty large one, and I thought I might be able to add some additional flair to it by weaving in a bunch of exotic species throughout. Alright, let's get into it. The first thing I do is identify all the pieces of walnut that I wanted to use for this project. Since they're just a touch too wide for the joiner, I shim them up onto a sled so that I could flatten them out using the planer. And once I've got the top of each piece smoothed out, I could take it off the sled, flip it over, and flatten the other side. Then with both sides perfectly flat, I could put clean edges on each one over at the joiner. Now that everything is milled up, I can place all the pieces together and verify I have enough room to make an 18 inch piece. Next, I pull out my super expensive high-end precision compass and I draw on a circle so that I can better visualize the final size. Then with things laid out, I go ahead and I glue up the walnut boards into two separate panels. Now the first species of wood that I wanted to add in was this piece of honey locust. Using painter's tape and CA glue, I temporarily fasten it down on top of one of the walnut panels. Then over at the bandsaw, I cut a wavy line right down the center of it. After the cut, I can pop the pieces off, peel off the tape, and match them up with their partners. I gave the pieces a light hand sanding to smooth out the bandsaw blade marks, and then I could glue them all together with a really thin piece of maple in between. This little piece takes up the space that the saw blade removed during the cut. Then I just squeeze it real tight in the clamps until it's dry. Then I figured I could work in some purple heart as well. I lined it up just where I wanted it and then fastened it down just like before. I drew on a guideline for me to follow, and then cut it out over at the bandsaw. Since that worked out so well, I glued on a piece of marble wood on the other panel, and I did the same thing. Any excess that stuck out the top got trimmed off as well, so that I could keep things pretty flat for whatever piece of wood gets added next. And when I couldn't fasten the pieces on the top of the panel, I had to glue them onto the bottom. Here, I added a piece of Ipe that was under the panel during the cut. I found that I could just use a block plane to quickly and easily shave down the thin maple strips that stuck out, so that I could get things ready for the next piece which in this case was yellow heart. I added a big block of it on the end and then sketched on the profile of my lower abdominal region. At the bandsaw, this got cut out, sanded, and glued up to dry. Similarly to how I feel about donuts, I figured I could fit in another if I tried hard enough, so I grabbed a block of mahogany and glued it onto the other end. Now with everything glued up and dry, it was time to start putting the woven sections together. I ran some painter's tape down the edges, used some CA glue, and pressed them together. Then, making sure I'm staying within the boundaries, I sketch on a wavy line for me to cut. Afterwards, the two little pieces get pulled off and discarded, and the two larger ones can be joined together. Just like before, I hand sand off the majority of the bandsaw blade marks, spread some glue, 
Insert a curve-sized thin strip of maple and then squeeze them up hard in the clamps. Now I'm very careful to inspect each of the seams to make sure that there's no gaps and that things are aligned perfectly before leaving them to dry. Later on, I could take it out of the clamps and shave down the maple strip. Now I was ready to put the two weaves together into one. However, the issue that I had was that there was too much of an overhang and I couldn't hold it flat on the bandsaw. So I temporarily glued on one of the thin offcuts to basically act as a spacer to account for the difference in height. Now it would sit flat on the table and I could make a cut to join both of these boards together. Just like before, the thin remnants were discarded. I removed the bandsaw blade marks with a light sanding, and I could finally glue up the two halves of the weave to make one big one. At this point, it's looking real good, but I thought that a couple more thin maple inlays would really tie it all together and add some more interest. So I sketched them on. I cut out the first one, glued in a thin strip, and then repeated the same process for the other one once things had dried. With it all together now, I could trim off just a bit so that the board would fit through the planer. Next, I got the other walnut panel to the exact same thickness and then I could glue them up together to form the final piece. I was real careful to get them lined up exactly, and I used a couple clamps along the seam to make sure they stayed coplanar with one another. And once it was dry, I broke out my high-end precision compass again, and I found the exact center of what will be the bottom of the Lazy Susan. Then I held my breath and I drilled a hole at that location, being very careful not to punch all the way through. Next, I grabbed my circle jig off the wall and made sure it's still sliding smoothly on the table saw. I popped in the correct size pivot pin into the center slider. I adjusted so that the jig will cut a 9 inch radius and then I locked it down in place. I placed the project piece down on top, raised the blade up, and then begin to make some cuts. Now at first I remove the corners, which is the bulk of the waste. And after that I just rotate it and I take off as big a piece as that I can. Eventually I'm just nibbling away at tiny corners until there's less than a blade's width of material to remove. And at that point I can basically just rotate the piece against the blade to shave off any excess and create a perfect circle. This jig is so much fun to use, and it works great. Next, I wanted to add a coved edge to give your fingertips a place to grab onto when turning the Lazy Susan. Plus, I thought it would look pretty sharp, too. After that, I used my trim router to add a small 1 8 inch round over to the top edge. Then it was time to start sanding. I went through the various grits, I stopped at 220, I sprayed the piece down with water to raise the grain, I let it dry and then I sanded again to get everything perfectly smooth. I used my calipers to get the Lazy Susan hardware in the exact center of the bottom and then I poked an awl through the mounting holes to mark their locations. I pre-drilled all the mounting holes, vandalized the bottom, and then began to apply some oil and wax. The finish just made the piece come alive. The figure of the walnut and the various colors of the other woods really popped out and looked beautiful. I grabbed a few of Grandpa's old flathead brass screws and I mounted on the Lazy Susan hardware. Yeah, this thing was a wrap. Man, it turned out looking so sharp. I just love all the different colors of all the other woods that are woven in. The coved edge makes it real easy to grab and turn, and 
it makes the edges of the weave look really cool too. And I really like how the weave is off to the side instead of being perfectly centered. I think it adds an artistic touch to it all. All in all, it turned out wonderfully. It'll live down here for now and get used when we entertain and are seated around the island. Or it'll no doubt get used when my boy wants to see how fast he can get it spinning and how far he can launch his toys off of it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Shoot! Dog got it? Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, the Krupskis. Oh. Crap. Right about there. Oh, crap. Oh, jeez. Nice! Oh, well, that's why it fell.